All right, welcome. My name is Shane Jimerson, and I am the current editor-elect uh, for School Psychology Review. And thank you for joining us today on this SPR webinar focused on reconceptualizing school psychology for the 21st century, the future of school psychology. We've got two distinguished colleagues here, both uh, who serve as, get, as senior editors for School Psychology Review. Both Dr. Amanda Sullivan as well as Frank Worrell are with us here this morning. I'll be facilitating the process. They'll be presenting some great information. And as senior editors, they're also serving as uh, the editors of this special topic section uh, forthcoming in School Psych Review focused on reconceptualizing school psychology for the 21st century. Now, those of you who have been joining us for some of the SPR Zoom webinars the past few months, uh, you can locate each of those sessions on the School Psych Review YouTube channel. So we encourage you to go in and check those out if there's ones that you missed or if you wanna watch them again. They can also be valuable resources for including in your classes, courses uh, this fall during the upcoming year. And if you wanna keep up to date with what's happening in the uh, School Psych Review YouTube channel, you can subscribe to that and it will send you updates as we post new videos and such. This uh, session is being recorded and we will be able to post uh, this session in the YouTube channel as well. So some of you came in a little bit early and were able to complete information on the poll just to give you a brief update about uh, who's participating today. We can see here that about 50% of the persons that are already on here are practitioners and then there's about 14% uh, who are students about 30 percent are faculty we have an administrator and then we have a couple other folks so welcome to all and we're looking forward to uh, being able to share some information as well as questions that you might have you're welcome to post in the chat and then at the end we'll also have a chance to engage in further discussion we anticipate we'll have a bit of time at the end for that also, the second question was, do you share our SPR commitment to advance diversity, equity, and social justice in the field of school psychology? And we have 90% of our colleagues saying, absolutely, I'm in. So this is fantastic because we have a couple hundred that are already uh, on this morning and perhaps we'll have even more as we go. There's a few, uh, only about less than 10% that are still learning, we'll see. And then a couple that are not really and they want to be convinced. So I'm sure Amanda and Frank will get, get uh, advanced the cause there this morning. And then uh, the final question was, are you currently engaged with SPR via social media? And uh, you could indicate any of those that you are. It looks like about 20% are engaged with the SPR Twitter, about 22% with the SPR Facebook, about 5% with SPR Instagram, uh, only about 6% with the SPR YouTube channel. We encourage you to subscribe and about two thirds, not yet. So encourage each of you to uh, get informed, be engaged. Uh, we're facilitating information flow about the journal through the social media. That includes free articles that are available on the Taylor and Francis website. Of course, NAS members have access to all the School Psych Review journal articles uh, for free as part of your membership. But for all those others out there, interdisciplinary colleagues and others, uh, we're featuring uh, scholars each month, uh, for instance, authors, student authors, as well as leaders of uh, SPR. And so you can get all that information by following us uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. And you can also link and get free access to those uh, featured articles each month as well. So we hope that uh, you'll engage with us there. We wanna to continue to build the community. And we also encourage you even today during the session, you're welcome to uh, feature information that we share. You can post it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever is appropriate, uh, we encourage you to do so. Okay, so as uh, noted in the um, questions there, School Psychology Review does have one of our core aims and foci presently is to advance diversity, equity, and social justice in school psychology. And so these are discussions that we've been having for some time. And in particular, these discussions, I remember even last year, I know when uh, Frank and I were in uh, what, at ISPA internationally, we were having this discussion and Amanda and I, even before that, months before had been having these discussions. And so it's really exciting here, uh, 
a, a year later, over a year later, to be able to engage in this session and feature this information about this forthcoming special topic section that will be featured in School Site Review. So that's a little bit of the housekeeping and we'll go ahead and march forward so you can get some good information here today. Let's see, uh, the, the first order of business is just to uh, allow each of us to do a brief introduction as related to the information we're presenting today. So I'll turn it over to Amanda. Hi, good morning. It's amazing to see so many people here. Um, so I'm a professor at the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis. Um, I direct the school psychology program where we prepare both specialist level and doctoral students. Um, and then in my scholarship, I explore issues related to equity and diversity with a focus around students with their risk with, for disability. Um, but more recently, I've been focusing particularly around social justice, health disparities, and MTSS. Thanks, Amanda. Hopefully, Frank. You yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, as Shane indicated, I'm Frank Worrell. I'm a professor at the University of California at Berkeley, where I am the director of the School Psychology Program. Um, my research um, focuses on a number of issues um, uh, centered on psychosocial constructs of, of particular relevance to this special issue. I study um, ethnic and racial minorities. Um, one of my areas of specialization is African-American education, but I actually um, look at education across all groups and um, study racial and ethnic identity and how those um, attitudes play out in schooling and, and mental health. And I would say that Interestingly, much of my work in that area has not been published in the school psychology space. It actually has been published in counseling psychology, which in fact is much more, or has been much more welcoming to work of that nature. Um, thanks. Excellent, thank you, Frank. And as I mentioned uh, previously, my name is Shane Jimerson, and I uh, am a professor here of school, in school psychology here at the University of California in Santa Barbara and uh, been engaged uh, in school psychology as a faculty member, as a colleague doing applied science uh, for the past 25 years. And I'm super excited about the uh, opportunity here to advance, uh, reconceptualize uh, school psychology for the 21st century. And as Frank had pointed out and uh, Amanda mentioned as well, uh, really emphasizing that school psychology review is a place where we can feature this great scholarship, this great work, and uh, really push towards meeting the needs of all children, ultimately really helping to support the social, emotional, behavioral, academic, as well as mental health, uh, and uh, doing that for all children, understanding that this uh, requires us to fully appreciate, engage, and have science that informs the uh, provision of support uh, services for uh, all children from diverse backgrounds. So with that, uh, we'll go ahead and launch into some of the uh, core elements for today. We're going to, this is our agenda. We're going to briefly provide a bit of information about the context, highlight the importance of the topic, emphasize the purpose of this particular special topic section. We'll briefly describe the types of manuscripts that we're uh, hoping to see encouraging colleagues to prepare and submit. We'll highlight the due date and Hopefully we'll have a brief uh, amount of time for questions and answers, but also encourage you to share information in the chat box that could help inform us, any questions, any ideas, any insights, uh, but also you can email us uh, beyond this time since we only have an hour here today together. Okay, so with that, I'll turn it over to Amanda and Frank. Thank you. So in thinking about kind of the context for this special issue, many of you might be familiar with the 2000, um, special mini-series on school psych in the 21st century. Um, and I picked this Time Magazine cover because to me it kind of represented what many, many of us might have remembered from 2000 in particular, um, worrying about uh, the end of the world and Y2K as clocks changed over and everything. Um, but this also stands out to me because it, in reading the special issue, um, which I've gone back to repeatedly, in many ways it seems like a quainter, simpler time, if you will. Um, but it was also a time when SPR kind of uh, took a break from the typical empirical articles that it features to um, highlight essays and then commentaries from leaders in the field um, that have come to be very influential in our scholarship and training, um, including a lot of different ideas that we, we take for granted now. Um, we can go to the next slide. So if we look to the table of contents, um, as far as the authors and the, uh, the topics they addressed, um, there was discussion about shifting the paradigms for professional roles, um, 
articulating what the theoretical grounding for our work should be, discussion of um, retrospective and prospective roles for the professional organizations, um, as well as the types of research and the, the focus of research that we needed to move the field along. Um, and certainly, like I said, many of these papers were influential in the work that's occurred since. And this is a series that I've referred to repeatedly. And as a professor, I teach our Intro to School site course, and I feature many of these um, articles to help our students understand how we got to where we are today um, in 2019, 2020, and then moving forward. Before you move on, Miranda, I'd just like to, to jump in and say, and I think if you have not looked at this issue and you're in, uh, thinking about submitting an article, I think it's a good idea for you to go and take a look at these articles. Um, be, because the idea is that this is sort of big picture for the field. So even if you are planning on submitting an empirical article, it really has to fit how is it pushing the field forward, given the themes that are going to be, um, uh, that Amanda will be talking about shortly. Thanks. So we can go to the next slide. So now we're kind of at this unique point in history. It's been 20 years since that mini series. Um, we're also more than halfway through 2020. Um, and it's safe to say it's been an interesting couple of decades. And so um, although this special topic was conceptualized before much of kind of our current context um, emerged, the motivation really remains in terms of how can we articulate a vision for the future of the field that's really well grounded in our current educational and sociopolitical context. Um, while taking into consideration what's come before, um, particularly in those, the last couple decades of this century. So we can go forward, Jim. So a notable feature of the, the 2000 miniseries was the similarity in the relative seniority and positionality of those authors that we saw a few slides ago. And so as, as we think about the needs in, in a special topic like this, we really hope to expand the range of perspectives featured here. Um, that is, we don't seek to elevate particular voices, but rather to create a space for individuals from throughout the field to contribute. Um, and so it's not about who the authors are so much as the ideas that they can provide for us. Um, and we welcome scholars from all career stages, including students, um, other early career scholars, uh, researchers, practitioners, um, to help us understand the future roles, theoretical and methodological issues in the field, um, who can come together and really collectively across a special topic, articulate different visions for where we need to go. Um, and so in doing that, as I said, we want to elevate um, diverse perspectives. We want to feature an epistemic diversity that might not have been characterized um, in some of these previous uh, uh, special topics or mini-series. Um, we're also really excited to feature inter and transdisciplinary approaches um, to the field and to, to addressing the big problems of the field. Um, first and foremost, we're looking for really forward thinking, innovative thinking, and as I mentioned before, that contextual relevance. So really well grounded and linked to this, our current social, political, um, and cultural context. And Frank, did you have anything to add? Uh, no, nothing at this point. <laughs> so um, the broad purpose is, as we've mentioned, to articulate what this next frontier of school psychology should be in our rapidly changing world. And so we want to cultivate uh, and curate this body of work that addresses the broad, this broad question. Um, and we welcome kind of field spanning commentaries um, and those address as well as those pr addressing particular dimensions of our professional activities. So if you look back to the 2000 mini series, it was everything from um, all of the different dimensions of practice to where does the research need to go to our professional organizations. Um, so really, we want to grapple with the, the questions of like, how do we really move our field forward? How do we ensure um, the social relevance? How do we contribute meaningfully to society? And how do we prepare future and current school psychologists to do so? Uh, yeah, so, so I would add here. So one of the things that, if, that you'd see when you, if you go back and look at that issue is that in, in some sense, diversity and culture were not mentioned. And in fact, in many cases, there, there was an assumption and, and, and is an assumption that in fact, culture doesn't matter. And um, I think both Amanda and I would <laughs> disagree with that assumption. Um, and so um, 
there was a, a special section actually of psychology in the schools in 2014, which actually something said something like culture matters. And so, and I think that this is something that our field really needs to grapple with. Being here in California, 50% of the students in our schools are Latinx, right? And so we, we've got to be able to engage with the students in our schools who are not traditionally, uh, you know, not just European American. We have a tremendous diversity of schools and uh, children in our schools, and that's actually happening ar across the country. And so that has to be a part of what's going on. And certainly from the political point of view, while we may see that this is, may seem to be a little less relevant to um, school psychology, um, just to note that in 2016, I was working with a, 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 a some seniors from a school, mostly Latinx and African American, who were going to be voting for the same time. They were getting ready to graduate. It was May of 2016. And they expressed tremendous dismay about the state of the country and were not going to vote because they did not think that the country took these issues seriously. Given, um, uh, given what has happened in the past four years, um, they were proved correct in some ways, um, but we actually need to engage with politics as much as we need to engage with anything else. Thanks. Certainly. And I see we had a question about what epistemic diversity means. And so um, when we say that, we mean all the different ways of knowing, um, the different methods of inquiry, the different epistemological perspectives, um, including um, cultural and group epistemologies. So really, how do we know what we know? How do we understand the world? How do we address our research questions? Um, and again, that's not necessarily something that school psychology research broadly, um, or particularly the, the research that gets highlighted and ha has been highlighted in SPR historically or some of the other leading journals has been characterized by. And so a major motivation for this special topic, as well as some of the others that we're doing, um, is creating a space to elevate those kind of conversations, to um, encourage a dialogue about what epistemic diversity means in school psychology, or what and what it maybe hasn't um, meant historically, but what it should be moving forward. Excellent. So we can go on to the next slide. So we're really looking for pa for papers here that address big ideas. So um, that's not to say that empirical works with narrow focus aren't relevant, but what we're really hoping to do is, is tackle um, big ideas that are relevant to the field at large. So what theories or frameworks should guide us going forward and how should they do so? Um, how do we actually diversify all aspects of the field? Certainly this is an area where school psychology has a lot of room to grow, especially as we think about um, the context and current state of other areas of psychology. Um, as Frank mentioned, we also want to to, we, we look for papers that help us work through the implications of um, timely social issues, issues of meta science. So if we think about where the science of school psychology needs to go, the scholarship of school psychology, how to issues around open science, um, meta science, and other issues that, um, again, we see these conversations coming to the forefront in other areas of, of the social science or in, in research at large. Um, but what we'd like to see is, is authors who are interested in grappling with what that means for our field, um, as well as the socio-political context. Again, for all dimensions of work, so practice, scholarship, graduate education. Um, we're also interested in papers that address the evolving challenges and opportunities for professional organizations and, and school psychology within school systems um, to really get at what does the field need to do to address some of the most pressing issues of our time. And so if you look at the RFP, we've identified um, several different sub areas there. So um, I would encourage you to look at that if, or if you have questions, we're happy to answer those. Okay. And so this is a moment of uh, being able to process, reflect for just a moment, uh, pop up a poll to see, check in, how things going. And you're welcome to post uh, questions in the chat here as we've got uh, a few more slides and information to present and then we'll have an opportunity to engage in discussion and explore uh, information that you folks would like to share, to highlight, to question and, um, and such. I'll give just another 
maybe 10, 15 seconds. I see a lot of folks, uh, there's a couple hundred participating and it's ratcheting up there. Okay, so far there's like wild consensus that it's great and keep going. So it's got that like 99%, bravo, Amanda and Frank. Uh, how clear is the information? 92% very clear, uh, about maybe 10% I need more explanation on several key points. That's perfect because we're going to have time for that. And then as you reflect on the information presented in this session, how does it make you feel? Bring It could bring up a lot of different feelings, right? And um, about half are excited. That's great. Uh, about 10% uh, are happy, you know, a few are frustrated. Yeah, I get that. And uh, about a third are enthusiastic. Um, a couple are depressed. And then... Uh, about another third are inspired, uh, and then there's just some other various emotions. So seems like we're at a good place here. So thanks for uh, participating in the uh, check-in. I'll, uh, I'll end that poll, and then we'll continue on with the slides to get a little bit more information. Okay, so a little bit more uh, that Amanda can share about the types of manuscripts that are encouraged in Frank. So the request for papers lists four different types of, of work we're interested in. I really want to emphasize, though, that we're particularly interested in commentaries and position papers or theoretical and conceptual papers. And again, these can address a, a range of broad issues um, from applied issues to research and theoretical issues to um, more of the organizational issues. Um, so addressing those big ideas and you tell us what the big ideas are so we we, we put in the rfp if some examples of papers we might welcome but we really want to see what folks in the field are thinking about um, and while we aren't necessarily targeting specifically empirical studies we are looking for papers that are well grounded in the theoretical conceptual and empirical literature um, and so i saw we had some questions about whether uh, certain ideas are too applied and i don't think that's i don't think given the nature of our field and the work that the majority of individuals in the field do, I don't think there could be papers that are too applied um, because that is the, the lion's share of school psychologists are actually the folks out there on the ground doing the work. And yes, good trouble. Yes. We welcome commentaries that get into good trouble. Excellent. Yeah, I saw that posted in there as well. Agreed. All right. Fantastic. A couple uh, a couple more slides, a little bit more information to share. I can briefly note that uh, initially, as we had been so uh, enthusiastic about this and discussed it for such an extended period, this was one of the first special topic sections that we were featuring in School Psych Review. And so initially we had the due date uh, a little bit earlier, right? But given everything that's going on and uh, considering the context, it made a lot of sense to do a bit of a, well, to do an extension and a bit of a shuffle in terms of where it would fit in. And so just to highlight again, the due date presently is to, uh, for December 10th, and that extended the due date by several months here to give folks more time, hopefully facilitate some more collaborations, communications, which certainly we're hoping, as I'm looking through the list of participants here, I'm certainly hoping that many of you are inspired to uh, prepare, submit manuscript to the journal uh, for the special topic section, as well as other, uh, just in general. But um, Hopefully this will give you more time to engage with each other. And as we said, the primary focus is clearly on advancing and reconceptualizing the field of school psychology for the 21st century. But as was noted, uh, several of our colleagues have been publishing uh, related scholarship in other journals. And, and it's also to say that we would welcome interdisciplinary uh, contributions. So if, uh, if you've got colleagues uh, outside of school psychology or if you yourself are outside of school psychology, consider this an open invitation for each of you to contribute and or to collaborate to uh, contribute on papers. So having the uh, due date there in December, hopefully that gives you a bit more time to uh, prepare. And then you'll submit using the uh, online portal. Any other elements you wanted to add there, Amanda? Okay. Um, actually, Shane, if I could yeah. say something, and I don't know, I don't want to feel free to say no to this. Um, one of the biggest issues sometimes for reviewers is the fact that individuals don't get the formatting right and so it sort of in, interferes with re reviewers reading the, man the manuscripts. Um, I've actually developed a checklist um, for APA 7. I, I had developed it when I was editor of RER and for APA 6 and I've updated it for my students and I certainly pass it 
to you to have on the SBR, SBR website so that people can download it. I think it's often particularly useful for students, not just for manuscripts that they're submitting, but for the papers that they're writing for their classes and, and stuff. Right. So. Excellent. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, forward that over and we can uh, post that as another resource as well. Thank you. Okay, so as you go to submit uh, the manuscript, uh, either for this special topic section or for others, uh, this is a screenshot you'll submit there on Taylor and Francis online, which again, for those of you that hadn't noticed, uh, there is currently a partnership between the National Association of School Psychologists, which who has always published the School Psychology Review. And now as of 2020, Taylor and Francis is the publishing uh, infrastructure and house. So that's why as you look at this screenshot, you'll see that uh, it'll have feature the Rutledge and Taylor and Francis and Cygnus and such. You can see there's a little green button on the homepage where you can simply click on that to submit an article. There are uh, additional information and resources available, including instructions for authors, uh, the aims and scopes of the journal. Uh, remember, if you're a NASP member, you have access to all of the journal, uh, school psych review journal volumes and issues uh, from the first one all the way through now. So that's important to note. Uh, if you're not an ASP member, as we mentioned, many, we, we, each month we're posting some articles that are available free and or you can get them through your institutional subscription as well. Now, the other thing that I wanted to note on this particular page is that we do have call for papers addressing multiple important special topic sections of which this is one. And so you can see here that uh, reconceptualizing school psychology for the 21st century, the future of school psychology uh, is, is one of those. But you can also see the other topics that we're taking on firmly committed with our leadership team as well as allied colleagues collaborating as guest editors to move the needle to advance uh, scholarship uh, to address diversity, equity and social justice in the field of school psychology. And so you can see those call for papers uh, at two locations. One is if you click there on any of those, it'll pop it up like this. Amanda was mentioning earlier the details that are provided regarding the types of papers that might address these types of topics, but we're also open to others. So on the Taylor and Francis website, you'll find this school psych review listing and you can get all the details as well as, sub as, well as submission information. And then of course over here, I've got a screenshot of the NASP website that also lists the special topic call for submissions. And if you click on that right there uh, for the reconceptualizing school psychology for the 21st century, you will be able to download a PDF copy of the guidelines and information. So again, these are more resources for you to follow up on uh, following this discussion. We've also been trying to share these links via email and social media, but given that you've taken the time to join the presentation today or possibly watching this video, uh, you can access more information about the special topic uh, sections, including this one. Uh, right there on Taylor and Francis and or through the National Association of School Psychologists. Any other details or information, either Frank or Amanda, that you wanted to share related to these two resources? Okay. All right. So the good news is we've been able to share some of the core details and overview in a timely manner, and there's opportunity for discussion. As, and as I have participated in many of these uh, Zoom webinars during the past few months, it's uh, fortunate when we have so many tremendously talented colleagues out there who are participating, participating and joining the conversation because uh, we can engage in some discussion. You're welcome, uh, Jamie. I'm not clear if they can unmute their mics or not, but uh, I think that they are able to. And uh, you can also post questions in the discussion section as well. Yeah, I have a few. <clears throat> Maybe we could do really quickly first. Sure. Um, one is, I have a couple like easy ones. One is page limit on this um, issue. Uh, good point. So generally speaking, the guidelines for SPR is to attempt to share the results of information or the paper within 35 pages. Now, any time that you're gonna to need to exceed that to uh, fully articulate each of the ideas, that you can specify that in the cover letter to identify the rationale for exceeding that. 
And generally speaking, 35 pages is sort of a sweet spot in terms of some folks come in a little under, some a little over. Uh, and certainly through revisions and uh, further feedback from reviewers, it's often the case that uh, manuscripts end up uh, becoming a bit a bit longer than that. But as you begin the uh, efforts, and again, I think in most instances, being being succinct, being to the point, being clear is the priority. Certainly, we're focused on the quality, not the quantity. Uh, but given that uh, we're trying to uh, have manuscripts fall within roughly that 30 page, 35 page limit, uh, do attend to it, but also know that you can indicate the rationale for why you needed to uh, surpass that. So we get this question a lot from authors and hopefully this information will be helpful as you begin to prepare the paper, as you think about revisions to the paper before you submit. Uh, trying to get close to that 35 is uh, 35 or fewer is fantastic. But also if you need to go beyond that, pr pr provide a rationale in the cover letter. And as we said, oftentimes we, we understand that the manuscripts get a bit longer as they go through the review process and with revisions. And then um, they can, once it's up, they can submit at any time. Correct? Excellent point. Yes. Yeah, so the, uh, the, the portal is open for submissions in general for all articles, as well as if you've got a manuscript prepared uh, for a special topic section in advance of the due date, you're welcome to submit then as well. Obviously, we do get a lot of those papers right during the same um, couple of weeks right before. And it's very valuable if you happen to have yours completed a bit earlier to go ahead and uh, submit. And that helps to spread out the workload as well, as you know, with uh, many of you serving as reviewers on editorial boards and such that uh, that it takes a lot of energy and a lot of time. And so for those of you that do have your manuscripts prepared sooner than December 10th, you're welcome to uh, submit any time throughout. And uh, just note in the cover letter that this is a submission for the to be considered for the special topic section on reconceptualizing school psychology in the 21st century. That way I can make certain to uh, assign it to, uh, to uh, invite either um, Frank or Amanda to manage that manuscript through the process. Yeah, that's a great question. Well, okay. certainly if anybody was prepared for the original August 15th deadline, you're welcome to submit it right away. <laughs> There's that's probably a few folks out there. That's a good point, Amanda. Yeah, and I've heard from several colleagues how uh, appreciative they are that now they have a bit more time as they were feeling a bit stressed and a bit uh, overwhelmed with everything else going on, especially with uh, kids going back to school and getting ready for college and all of the things that are happening within our communities. And so, yeah, but if you do happen to have it and you are inspired and compelled, you can submit it sooner. Yeah. Um. Okay, the article, The Ecology of School Psychology, examine, Examining and Changing Our Paradigm for the 21st Century, <laughs> really resonated with someone who asked a question, and they often are having their students read it. And so they asked, do you think our paradigm actually changed? If not, what needs to happen to affect change now? So I would say that's something for authors to address. I mean, we don't want to... Um, we don't want to constrain uh, the work that might be submitted here, but I think that's actually a really interesting question that would be exciting for one or more submissions to address. Right, and I would, I, I would add that if you believe that the current paradigm is fine, just not being used appropriate, you know, not being thought about. One can make that argument, right? The idea here is for how can school psychology move forward? Is Are there things right now that we are doing that we need to keep? Um, are there things that in fact need to change? So both, both of those directions actually could speak to this special issue. And a really exciting thing with this kind of, of special topic is that we could have multiple papers addressing similar questions, but in different ways. And that's something we would want to feature, right? There's no like right answer in any of this. And certainly going back to that notion of epistemic diversity, having um, competing perspectives potentially is something that I think actually enriches the scholarship of the field as opposed to um, taking away from it. Excellent. And uh, Jamie, there might be one person that was having a bit of background noise there. I was noting um, 
but uh, we might have to do a mute there just to not have that. But uh, the other thing that's important about this is I've been thinking about it and Amanda and Frank reminded me in their comments is that school psych review, all of these special topic sections are open to general submissions to all colleagues. Uh, so in contrast to other special issues where they've already got a lineup of say five or seven papers that are basically the, the primary core papers that'll be there. Um, certainly we're encouraging authors and communicating with colleagues, but I just want to highlight that it's true for all of our special topic sections that in SPR that everyone has an opportunity to submit a manuscript for consideration. And I also really liked what Amanda was saying about uh, embracing the diversity of ideas because that's what, what we're hoping to accomplish through opening, opening this door broadly, widely, is that we will be able to yield uh, the various perspectives and, and re really inform our thinking to advance, uh, advance our field and our profession, our specialty of school psychology uh, into the next frontier. Okay, I have one more. <clears throat> I got a lot of people, you know, telling me that they were grateful that there were people of color on the panel. And um, some people were asking questions related to, you know, if they're working with students who um, are students of color, but most of the administration is not, how can they encourage teachers and administrators to examine racism that exists within the um, district. So kind of, um, will there be a focus on any of that in this um, issue was sort of where that question went. So I think certainly that's something that could be addressed in the special topic. There's also another that I'm leading with um, other colleagues that has a uh, January deadline um, on theories, methods, and practice to advance equity and social justice in school psychology. And so I think either I would like to see it here or in that special topic or just in a general issue. But certainly that's something that the field has to grapple with given the demographics relative to the, the populations and communities we serve. Right, and I would add that, I mean, so there's, there's the special issue which this webinar is about, but I also heard in that question um, something about what can I do in my practice right now? And, 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 and so why we can't really get into that, what I would suggest is, again, I mentioned the, there's an article, uh, a special topic section of Psych in the Schools called Culture Accounts, um, which was published in 2014. Um, and I think several of those art articles may, may provide some useful um, guidance um, for, for, for practitioners who are working in schools where the teachers administrators look very different from the kids. And if you are collecting data locally in your district, one can actually use data as a way to get people to pay attention, especially given the current zeitgeist. I think it, it allows, it's, it's heightened the importance of paying attention to these issues, I think, for the country. Absolutely, thanks. Thanks both Amanda and Frank. Are there other particular questions that you had noted, Jamie, as uh, you've been able to uh, kind of comb through the chat discussion? Um, or we can also open it up to other folks who want to engage. Uh, I'm starting to get, that was all I had from previous, but I have a few more now. Um, okay. School psychology clearly needs to promote scholarship, ped pedagogy, and um, research. However, we cannot find um, that we are a practitioner. We cannot forget that we are a practitioner profession. How do we maintain the balance so that the practitioner side does not get submerged? And again, I think um, questions like that are, are topics that hopefully one or more papers will address. Right, and, 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 and as I would argue, and, and I would disagree a little bit with the question's premise, I would argue that we are scientific, scientist practitioner um, things. Now, some people are mostly scientists or all scientists and some are mostly practitioner or practitioner, but the practice doesn't occur, a good effective practice doesn't occur with great science, right? And that's why in fact, um, practice changes. Um, I think um, Cecil Reynolds said a number of years ago, standard practice of today, malpractice of tomorrow, <laughs> right? Um, what may have worked when we had a school schools that were all, you know, mostly European American um, 
uh, upper middle class um, wealthy folks are not the kinds of things that will work in, in, in an urban school with, with students of color. And so, so that's the bridge between science and practice. I think they both have to be part of this. With regard to the special issue in particular, I, for, for scholars, they have to write articles as part of their job. Practitioners typically don't. And that's why their voices are often missing. I would encourage practitioners who want to write articles, want to, get, to probably get together with, you know, so with, with some collaborators so that they're not doing it alone because this is not your day job in some sense. Or actually partner, partner with, with scholars, but you taking the lead about the ideas that you think about how can practice or how should practice be served? How should practice look going forward so that your voices are part of this special issue? Uh, those are excellent, excellent points that both Amanda and Frank make. And I would just like to reiterate that, that uh, School Psych Review is committed to bringing science to practice, to publishing science that will inform and advance practice. And there's a reciprocal relationship there that, um, that Frank's highlighting that we welcome and embrace. And to that, to that extent, uh, we involve uh, practitioners as members of the editorial board, for instance, as reviewers. So that's been fantastic. It's not uh, only scholar, or it's not only faculty scholars, but it's also practitioners. Uh, we also include students. Uh, we have a student editorial board division uh, that we've begun with School Psych Review just this year that we're launching. And of course, uh, we anticipate that many of those students are intimately connected with uh, the practice of school psychology as they're learning about um, developing their skills both as practitioners and scholars. And so I really appreciate the question and I also just really appreciate the responses that both Amanda and Frank provided because School Psych Review really is the place to publish scholarship that's going to advance and inform practice. Uh, that's really at the heart of what it is that we're doing. Uh, again, School Psychology Review is being distributed to you know, over 25,000 members of NASP, in addition to those other institutional subscriptions and such, uh, that, that's really unparalleled with any of the other journals. And so the audience of the School Psych Review necessarily and absolutely includes practitioners and bringing this information to inform and advance the practice. But as Frank was also highlighting, engaging practitioners as reviewers, as authors, as collaborators, because authentically that's going to help us uh, to, to make it more meaningful in advancing, uh, providing information that will advance and inform the practice of school psychology. And also I will note that we are also committed to featuring scholarship and articles that will inform and advance policy in addition to practice. So fundamentally those three elements are core to uh, the articles that we would intend to feature are those that will inform and advance scholarship, those that will inform and advance practice, and those that will inform and advance uh, policy. Do you have another question there, Jamie, that uh, was noted? Um, no, that's all I've received so far. Okay, and uh, there might be, if anybody else wanted to make comments out there, uh, we're, we're welcome to open it up for that as well. I know that some folks might wanna unmute themselves and do that. I know we've got many uh, distinguished colleagues as I've uh, seen the list of participants here, they're doing a lot of great work in this space to be applauded and commended. And we're hoping that uh, many of you will uh, develop manuscripts to submit and continuing to do this great work. But we're also open to other comments or thoughts, uh, words of wisdom. Let me go ahead and launch that poll because we're getting down to about the last, uh, the last 10 minutes or so. But I can put up the poll, which will also ask you to reflect on a few things and also share information in the chat box. And um, you can take a look at that. I'm looking at the chat just to see other things that are in there as well. So in terms of, um, you know, possible suggestions for seeking current research that provides information about niche settings and perhaps niche, for instance, preschool or early childhood, which actually we intend to feature good work in that area as well. When you look at our SPR leadership team, we specifically have colleagues with expertise recognizing that that's an area that hasn't been uh, featured as much. 
but uh, certainly we would hope that we'll be able to feature this type of work in school psych review. Uh, some of you are engaged in that work and that scholarship. There's other interdisciplinary or there's other journals we can benefit from some of our interdisciplinary um, colleagues who are publishing this work. And just so you know, for members of NASP, you also do have access to several other Taylor and Francis journals uh, free of charge uh, via the Taylor and Francis uh, website. So we'd encourage you to both look for this information within School Psych Review, as well as take advantage of colleagues who are publishing in other journals. And the only other thought that I have on this, uh, especially since you brought up the topic of early childhood, is that we're collaborating with colleagues to bring in interdisciplinary scholars who are, will serve as guest editors and contribute some of the leadership to developing these types of special topic sections in the future for, uh, to be featured in School Psych Review. So hopefully that's helpful. I see another point that was popped up there. I don't know if Amanda or Frank, if you had any other thoughts as related to any of the questions or uh, it looks like. Um, if I could comment on, I think was what Jill Davidson just wrote about practitioners are often not completely in charge of their own goals. I think, and it's easy to fall into passivity. And I think that that's actually often the case. Um, I teach consultation. And one of the things I say to students in that class is that when you find a district that you actually want to stay in and, you know, that you're planning on staying in, you want to be there, but that things, what's your 10 year plan to change that district, right? <laughs> the ultimate goal of consultation, right, is actually to engage with others to, to, make, to, to make change happen. And so, so that I think, in fact, we need to think of change and not just as in let's change something this year, but our longer term plans as we move a district to more, more equitable or socially just practices and so forth, that that's something that could be part of our personal plan, even though that's not necessarily we were just hired to do testing, <laughs> right? So I would, I, 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 I um, support Jill's comment. Well, I, I want to thank all the practitioners who've in the comments identified some of these really important issues that were that many of you are grappling with in the field. And I, again, I would just emphasize that those are the kind of topics that I we would really like to see authors engage in this this special topic. Um, and I think for some of them, where we don't necessarily have the conceptual frameworks, the practices, the theoretical frameworks within school psychology now. Um, I would encourage folks to think about either articulating new ones. I think this is a really good space to do that kind of work or to draw from other disciplines, whether it's related areas of school psych of psychology, um, the social sciences, the health sciences, um, and to articulate how those might be applied, modified, for application within school psychology to address those really important um, dimensions of practice and preparation that you all pointed out. Yeah, and as Amanda was highlighting, the fact that 50% of the participants in this uh, webinar are practitioners is really inspiring to me because we've done an assortment of these types of uh, Zoom webinars for SPR. And I've got to say that often we have a large number of uh, students and faculty, uh, but often fewer practitioners. And it's really so important to be engaged and to hear from your perspective what is needed, because especially at this juncture, as we are always in the development of these uh, additional special topic sections, for instance, uh, but also for what type of content might be featured in this type of special topic section, even asking the questions is really valuable. So when you say, what about this or what about that? Uh, what if, the, is this topic gonna be featured? That helps us to be able to engage with colleagues, to do more outreach, to hopefully be able to feature that type of scholarship. And it also matters because as uh, maybe you yourself will want to engage in being an author or co-author on those types of papers, for instance, but also as we're receiving manuscripts and reviewing them, this is also very helpful, the feedback that you're providing and the questions that you're asking, uh, especially from coming from a space of, uh, as a practitioner, being able to identify those areas of greatest need for you, well, for us collectively, uh, because that helps inform each of us as editors and leaders of the journals uh, to be able to facilitate that, uh, that type of information, uh, hopefully being revealed or forthcoming, being featured in these types of special topic sections. So I wanted to reiterate what Amanda was saying. It's really great that we have so many um, 
practitioner and colleagues that are involved at this juncture. And we're open to further communication. So it's open invitation to email us to uh, share additional ideas as well. Any other ones that came up there, Jamie, that you're noting or as uh, Amanda or Frank had seen, I know lots of folks are posting uh, comments in there. Um, or if anybody wanted to, I think folks can unmute themselves. Is that right, uh, Jamie? Yeah, anyone can ask a question. Um, okay. um, there's just a lot of kind of discussion about, it looks to me like possible topics that would be useful. And um, so I don't really see a lot of questions. Okay. okay. Excellent. Excellent. Well, uh, it's been it's been really great to be able to get uh, opportunity to share this information, orient folks towards the good work that's uh, happening here within the special topic section. Also, just highlighting again what Amanda pointed out that this isn't just a one off. It's not that there's just this one special topic section and this is where the good ideas can go to address diversity or equity or social justice. That's not it at all. In fact, most of each of the most of the special topic sections are specifically focused on advancing science scholarship practice associated with uh, diversity, equity, and social justice. And even the couple of special topics that aren't specifically centered on that also include a strong emphasis on, uh, on these topics as well. So this is all to say that even if your scholarship uh, or your efforts or your ideas don't necessarily meet the mark for this special topic section, that's okay. There's always an open, you can always submit online and it doesn't have to fit neatly into this special topic or even another special topic and or as we say, SPR, be the change, right? You might want to propose a special topic for the future that's going to address that area of emphasis that you see as such importance and such uh, dire need. So again, we're not, we want to make it clear that we're featuring this uh, special topic focused on reconceptualizing school psychology in the 21st century during this discussion and greatly appreciate both Amanda and Frank being here with us today and providing the leadership and facilitating uh, some exchange of ideas and further discussion. But I did also want to point out that this is an open door and the, the gate is open that we're, we're encouraging our colleagues to consider school psych review as an outlet for scholarship that's going to uh, help advance diversity and equity and, so, and social justice in the field of school psychology to benefit children, to build, benefit families, to benefit communities. And there's opportunities to submit, not just this month, not just next month, not just by December 10th, but for the next uh, several years, hopefully indefinitely, School Psych Review will be the place to feature great uh, scholarship and papers that help us advance uh, these important topics. I noted that uh, as we're as we we're as I was sharing some closing comments there, that uh, there was one more question that might have surfaced. Is that right, Jamie? Yeah, this one I think you'll want to answer. But um, what is the timeline after December for these papers? Oh, okay, great question. And hey, this is a chance for us to highlight that at School Psych Review, we are committed to providing decision correspondence in. in uh, in 30 days, uh, this uh, as we've started up taking manuscripts just here recently, there's been a couple that have just gone slightly beyond the 30 days. But in general, we've gotten a lot done in 20 and 25, but uh, below 30 days. So you would receive, uh, if it uh, goes through the review process, you would receive a decision letter within about a month. I know with this one falling into the December and having the various holidays and breaks and such, I anticipate that these might uh, trickle into you know, 30, 35, uh, 40 days, just given you need uh, editorial board members, uh, reviewers to have an opportunity to uh, review, and then the action editors to have time to uh, craft the decision letters. And then following that, uh, we generally have a 30-day window to encourage authors to complete revisions and uh, provide a, a resubmit their ma manuscript if, if it's uh, invited for review and uh, or for further re revision and review. And then uh, the process continues. Those of, you, those of you familiar with the uh, process understand that once you did submit the revised manuscript, the action editors, myself, as well as the uh, reviewers would take another look at that manuscript to see if you've addressed those uh, individual areas. And ultimately, um, we might go through that 
review revision process a few times, right? It's not uncommon to go through that two or three, maybe even four times. Uh, and the good news is every time you're invited to revise and resubmit, it means you're one step closer to uh, acceptance and ultimately getting that uh, work published in School Psych Review. And then following that, uh, we do have this slated to be featured uh, during the upcoming year. This special topic section is anticipated to be featured articles that are submitted to the special topic section being featured uh, during 2021. And so that's important uh, as we look at timelines because we would anticipate that it would be late 2021 or uh, very early 2022. But if we have the manuscripts there and everything's ready to go, then it appears that we would have the space to be able to feature this uh, great work in 2021. So I hope that's helpful. That's a great question, Jamie, that someone had asked is thinking about the timeline for these things. I did want to, um, any other questions there, Jamie, that we needed to address? Or are we good on that front? We're good? Uh, no, all good. Okay, so let me just, uh, in closing, we had done that brief poll so I can share the information update that uh, we asked, what, what, was the information helpful in thinking about the SPR special topic section on reconceptualizing school psychology for the 21st century. And 90% said yes and thank you, looking forward to it. A uh, few said sort of, and then not really, I was hoping for other information. So maybe I'll email you about that or put information in the chat box. And uh, then the other question we asked was, <laughs> are you inspired to contribute to the efforts of SPR to advance uh, diversity, equity, and social justice in the field of school psych? And fortunately, we have about two thirds of our colleagues who are on board right now. Uh, there's about 25% uh, that are maybe still thinking about it. And a smaller number, about 10% who, eh, not yet, still need some more time. All right, so we'll keep working together, collaborating, communicating, sharing information of which this type of uh, special topic section ought to be part of this process to help uh, inform us. And, you know, I saw a lot of words of wisdom popping up in the chat, and that's great because we'll be able to take a look at those and reflect on those uh, comments that are shared in the chat. Uh, we asked if they had comments and about 10% said, yeah, they do. So we see that in there. It's really great to uh, see the words of wisdom that are shared. We hope that each of you will feel comfortable uh, if, you're, if you're so inclined or inspired to email Frank, to email Amanda, to email myself, um, providing us with further insights, guidance. And again, if you're so inspired, and there's additional topics that we should be featuring and addressing in uh, school psych review over the upcoming uh, years, then please feel free to reach out and join us and uh, make those contributions to be the change. So again, I express uh, tremendous gratitude to Amanda Sullivan and Frank Worrell for all of their efforts, uh, both in conceptualizing, preparing, and then participating, contributing today. Uh, also, a uh, brief uh, thank you to both uh, Jamie Flowers and Ryan Farmer for their efforts, as well as uh, Kirby Wyckoff in preparing for this session today on behalf of uh, School Psych Review social media team. And please do be in touch, stay in touch, uh, stay connected, join us within the uh, Twitter, the Instagram, the Facebook, as well as check out these videos and others that will be featured on the School Psych Review YouTube channel. So with that, uh, I think we're just out of time and I uh, hope each of you have a wonderful rest of your day and look forward to further communications and collaborations. Thank you. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you all. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you.